Hey guys, welcome back to Click Academics. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to solve this exponential equation. And make sure to stick to the end of the problem, where I have two bonus problems that are similar to this one, which you guys can try to solve. Alright, so I have x to the power of x to the power of 6 is equal to 144. Now, we want to find the value of x here. So we obviously first start with x to the power of x to the power of 6 is equal to 144. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the power of 6 on both sides. So now I have x to the power of x to the power of 6 to the power of 6 is equal to 144 to the power of 6. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. And a to the power of m times n here, these two are interchangeable, meaning a to the power of m times n, this is also equal to a to the power of n times m. So now, if I can rewrite a to the power of m times n as a to the power of m to the power of n, and this means that I can also rewrite a to the power of n times m as a to the power of n to the power of m. So this means that a to the power of m to the power of n is equal to a to the power of n to the power of m. So right here we have x to the power of x to the power of 6 to the power of 6. So we could rewrite this as x to the power of 6 to the power of x to the power of 6. Now this is equal to 144 to the power of 6. Now, I'm going to let x to the power of 6 equal y. So now I have y to the power of y is equal to 144 to the power of 6. Now 144, this is the same thing as 12 to the power of 2. So now I have y to the power of y is equal to 12 to the power of 2 to the power of 6. Now if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. So 12 to the power of 2 to the power of 6, that's going to equal 12 to the power of 2 times 6, which is simply 12 to the power of 12. So I have y to the power of y equals 12 to the power of 12. This means that y is equal to 12. So now we let x to the power of 6 equal y. So now that we know the value for y, this means that x to the power of 6 is equal to 12. So now to solve this, I'm going to take the 6 root on both sides. So then these two cancel out, and I'll be left with x is equal to the 6 root of 12. So this is our answer. All right, so I have x to the power of x to the power of 2 is equal to 16. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the power of 2 on both sides. So now I have x to the power of x to the power of 2 to the power of 2 is equal to 16 to the power of 2. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. And a to the power of m times n, these two are interchangeable, m and n. Meaning I can also rewrite a to the power of m times n as a to the power of n times m. And if I can rewrite a to the power of m times n as a to the power of m to the power of n, then this means that I can rewrite a to the power of n times m as a to the power of n to the power of m. So this means that a to the power of m to the power of n is equal to a to the power of n to the power of m. So in this case, we can think of x squared as m and 2 as n. So now if I switch the... So now I will have x to the power of 2 to the power of x to the power of 2. And this is still equal to 16 squared. So now 16 here, this is equal to 4 squared. So now if I replace 16 with 4 squared, I get x to the power of 2 to the power of x to the power of 2 is equal to 4 squared 
to the power of 2. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. So 4 to the power of 2 to the power of 2, that's going to equal 4 to the power of 2 times 2. And 2 times 2 is 4, so I have 4 to the power of 4. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of a is equal to b to the power of b, and this means that a is equal to b. So in this case, x to the power of 2 is equal to 4. And now if I take the square root on both sides, these two cancel out, and I'm left with x is equal to plus or minus 2. So my two solutions are x is equal to 2 and x is equal to negative 2. All right, so I have 7 to the power of x is equal to 7. So now I want to solve for the value of x. So for my solution here, 7 to the power of x is equal to 70. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the log on both sides. So now I have log 7 to the power of x is equal to log 70. And now an important property of logarithms is that if I have something in the form log a to the power of b, I can actually move this exponent b to the front of the logarithm. So in this case, this would equal b times log a. And the reason why this, x, this property is so important is because in this case, x here is an exponent, right? And we want to solve for the value of x. Well, solving for the value of an exponent is really hard, especially in this case, because we know our exponent is going to be a decimal or fraction. So now, if we use this property, x is going to turn into a term and not an exponent. So that's why this property is so useful. So now, I'm going to have, can move this exponent x to the front. So I'll have x times log 7 is equal to log 7. Now I can divide both sides by log 70. Or sorry, log 7. So then these two cancel out. Now we left with x is equal to log 70 over log 7. Now log 70, this is the same thing as log 7 times 10. And now if I have something in the form log a times b, this is equal to log a plus log b. So in this case, log 7 times 10, that's going to equal log 7 plus log 10. Now I have this over log 7. Now, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this as log 7 over log 7 plus log 10 over log 7. Now, log 7 over log 7, these two can simply cancel out. So I'll be left with x is equal to 1 plus log 10 over log 7. And now the value of log 10, this is simply equal to 1. So I have x is equal to 1 plus 1 over log 7. Now, log 7, you can actually find the value of this on a calculator, log 7 is equal to 0 0.845. So now I have x is equal to 1 plus 1 over 0 0.845. So now we are going to do 1 divided by 0 0.845. And this is equal to approximately 1.1834. So now 1 plus 1.1834 is 2.1834. So this is my answer.